This is the seventh lecture of System Verilog English playlist, and in today's video, we are going to discuss object-oriented programming, that is OOP. So, object-oriented programming in System Verilog refers to the paradigm of programming, where concepts like the classes, objects, inheritance, encapsulations, and polymorphisms are used to model the digital hardware in a more structured and efficient manner. So, System Verilog being an extension of Verilog introduces OOP features to facilitate complex hardware design and verification tasks. Object-oriented programming lets you create complex data types and tie them together with the routines that work with them. So, you can create test benches and system level models at a more abstract level by calling routines to perform an action rather than toggling bits. So, when you work with transactions instead of signal transitions, you are more productive and as a bonus, your test bench is decoupled from the design details, making it more robust and easier to maintain and reuse on the future projects. So, in OOP, we have class, objects, inheritance and polymorphism. So, one by one, we will understand each of the concept in detail. Starting with the class. So, in System Verilog, a class is a user-defined data type that encapsulates both data, that is the variables, and methods, that is functions, to operate on the data. It serves as a blueprint for creating objects, which are instances of the class. Classes provide a mechanism for modularization, encapsulation, and abstraction in hardware design. Several components are there in classes like the member variables, that is data, member functions, that is methods, and constructors. In our next video, we will understand this class in detail and we will see how to write the code for that. So, in summary, we can say OOP classes in System Verilog provides a structured and efficient way to model the digital hardware designs. They facilitate the creation of modular, reusable and maintainable code structures promoting the best practices in hardware design and verification. The next one is objects. So, in System Verilog, an object is an instance of a class. Objects encapsulate data that is variables and behavior that is methods defined within the class. They represent specific occurrence or instances of the class each with its own set of data and behavior. So yes, in summary, we can say objects in System Verilog enable a structured and efficient approach to modeling digital hardware design. They promote encapsulation, modularity and code reuse facilitating the development of scalable and maintainable hardware design. Next one is inheritance. Certainly in uh, object-oriented programming, inheritance is a fundamental concept that allows a class known as a subclass or the derived class to inherit the properties and methods from the another class known as the superclass or the base class. So, in System Verilog, inheritance provide a mechanism for code reuse and promote a hierarchical organization of the classes. In simple words, you can say you have a parent class or the base class and you want to inherit the properties of your base class into the child class In that is known as the inheritance. Some use cases of inheritance are like in a digital design context. Inheritance can be used to create a hierarchy of hardware components where higher level components inherit functionality from the lower level components. In verification environment, inheritance allows the creation of specialized test classes that inherit common test infrastructure from a base test class. Next one is polymorphism. Polymorphism is a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming that allows objects of different classes to be treated uniformly based on their common superclass. So, in System Verilog, polymorphism enables the implementation of methods in subclasses that are specific to their own context while adhering to a common interface defined in the superclass. Some common use cases are like uh, in uh, verification environment, polymorphism allows the uh, different test classes to implement their own versions of the test sequences while adhering to a common test interface defined in the base test class. 
or in the uh, digital design polymorphism can be used to uh, model the different types of hardware components that share a common interface such as the uh, input output ports or the memory blocks so likewise you can use the polymorphism concept next we will see the oop versus verilog terminology so first is class class is a basic building block containing routines and variables which we use in object oriented programming it is analogous to the modules which we use in verilog next is object object is an instance of a class in verilog as you need to instantiate a module to use it similarly in case of object oriented programming whenever uh, we write a class we build a class we can use this uh, that class by creating the object so object is nothing but an instance of the class next is handle so handle is a pointer to an object in verilog you use the name of an instance when you refer to signals and methods from outside the module however in case of oop handle is like the uh, address of the object but it is uh, stored in a pointer that can only refers to the one type property a variable that uh, holds the data in verilog this is a signal such as the register or the wire then we have method so uh, the procedural code that uh, manipulates the variables contained in tasks and functions verilog modules have tasks and functions plus initial and always blocks so this is a common terminology which we use in object oriented programming and how it is analogous to the verilog that we have seen now this is our system verilog test environment so the question is what is class based verification environment the test bench infrastructure that we create using the class data type in system verilog is called the class based verification environment basically we use object oriented programming to create the test bench infrastructure in system verilog so you need to understand the object oriented programming for that and as we have already discussed oop is a programming methodology which helps us to create any kind of application or infrastructure as a collection of interacting objects so what we do uh, in system verilog basically we create all the test bench components which you are seeing here using the class data type and then we instantiate them as a object in the top level environment so you can consider the top level verification environment as a collection of interacting objects that's how we implement the test bench infrastructure in system verilog also what we do we instantiate the complete verification environment which you are seeing here in a top level module so you can consider the environment itself as a dynamic object and what it truly means is the environment is a dynamic environment and you can do everything dynamically during the simulation for example if you want to increase the number of drivers or the monitors or whatever changes you just want to make you can do the dynamically during the simulation and that's how you would be able to generate a different kind of scenarios dynamically while running different kind of test cases as i have already discussed this test environment in the second lecture of system verilog and i hope it is clear to you so now we are going to see how we can create the complete test bench infrastructure as a class based verification environment using object oriented programming concept whatever uh, basics which we have studied for object oriented programming now we will see how we have to apply that in real time when you are writing the code so in class based verification environment every component will be created using the class data type so you can see here generator is a class we have defined as a class so class end class and then the generator definition is given likewise driver is a class monitor is a class scoreboard is also a class so we have to define all the components of the uh, uh, your test bench so we create classes for every component and this is how we instantiate all the lower level component as object in the top level environment so the top level environment is also a class so you can see here this is a class environment in this we have instantiated all the other classes which we have defined here test case is also a class 
here we have instantiated the environment i think from the diagram it is clear to you how the internal components are going to uh, instantiated in the outer components also we use the interface to connect the environment with the dut so you can see here we have defined the interface dut is a module and we create the top level module there we generate clock instantiate interface and then we connect the dut with the test case using the interface instances so dut we have defined here and in our top level module we have instantiated the interface the dut and the test so this is how your top module will look like i hope it is clear to you and you are getting the concept this is what we are going to explore how we can use the class data type to create all the test bench components and then how we can implement different kinds of test cases using the object oriented programming guys this concept is quite new and i can totally understand that most of you are not getting the concept so don't worry just pause the video repeat uh, those parts which you are not getting or just try to watch this video two three times prepare a proper notes then definitely you will be able to understand all the concepts in case of any doubt let me know in the comment box or also you can uh, ask your doubts in our community blsi point on telegram hit the like button if you like today's content in next video we will discuss the class in detail